Mizoram is one of the states of Northeast India, with Aizol as its capital. The name is derived from Mi, which means people, Zo, which means belonging to the people of Mizoram, and Ram, which means land. And thus, Mizoram implies land of the hill people. In the Northeast, it is the southernmost landlocked state sharing borders with three of the seven sister states Tripura, Assam, Manipur. The state also shares a 722 km border with the neighboring countries of Bangladesh and Myanmar, like several other northeastern states of India. Mizoram was previously part of Assam until 1972. When it was carved out as an Union territory, it became the 23rd state of India, a step above Union territory on 20th February 1987. For over two decades, it has experienced peace and steady progress. Mizoram Peace Accord signed in 1986 has the distinction of being the most enduring and successful peace accord in the history of independent India. Mizoram has the most variegated hilly terrain in the eastern part of India. The hills are steep and are separated by rivers which flow whether to the north or south, creating deep gorges between the hill ranges. The average height of the hills is about 1,000 meters. The highest peak in Mizoram is the Blue Mountain, with a height of 2,210 meters. Mizoram has a pleasant climate. It is generally cool in summer and not very cold in winter. During winter, the temperature varies from 11 to 21 degrees centigrade and in the summer it varies between 20 to 29 degrees centigrade. The entire area is under the direct influence of the monsoon. It rains heavily from May to September and the average rainfall is 254 cm per annum. Historians believe that the Mizos are a part of the great wave of the Mongolian race spilling over into the eastern and southern India centuries ago. Their sojourn in western Myanmar, into which they eventually drifted around the 17th century, is estimated to last about 10 centuries. They came under the influence of the British missionaries in the 19th century and now most of the Mizos are Christians. One of the beneficial results of missionary activities was the spread of education. The missionaries introduced the Roman script for the Mizo language and formal education. The cumulative result is the present high percentage of literacy of 88.49%, which is considered to be the second highest in India. The Mizos are a distinct community and the social unit was the village. Around it revolved the life of a Mizo. Mizo village was usually set on top of a hill with the chief's house at the center and the bachelor's dormitory called Zolbuk prominently located in a central place. In a way, the focal point in the village was the Zolbuk, where all young bachelors of the village slept. Zolbuk was a trading ground and indeed, the cradle wherein the Mizo youth was shaped into a responsible adult member of the society. The social fabric in the Mizo society has undergone tremendous change over the years. Before the British moved into the hills, for all practical purposes, the village and the clan formed units of Mizo society. The Mizo Code of Ethics, an untranslatable term meaning on the part of everyone to be hospitable, kind, unselfish, and helpful to others. Klom ngayina to a Mizo stands for that compelling moral force which finds expression in self sacrifice for the services of others. The old belief, Patian, is still in use to term God till today. The Mizos have been enchanted to their newfound faith of Christianity with so much dedication and submission that their entire social life and thought process have been altogether 
transformed and guided by the Christian church organizations directly or indirectly, and the sense of values has also undergone drastic change. Mizos are a close-knit society with no class distinction and no discrimination on grounds of sex. 90% of them are cultivators and the village exists like a big family. Birth of a child, marriage in the village and that of a person in the village or a community feast arranged by a member of the village are important occasions in which the whole village is involved. Nearly all the Mizo festivals revolve around the tilling of the land. Mim Kut, Tsatsar Kut, and Pol Kut are the three major festivals in Mizoram, all of which are in some way or the other connected with agricultural activities. Mim Kut is celebrated in August, September in the wake of the harvesting of the maize crop. Dedicated to the memory of their dead relatives, the festival is underlined by a spirit of thanksgiving and remembrance of the years. First harvest is placed as an offering on a raised platform built to the memory of the dead. Tsaptar Kut, which is celebrated during springtime after the jhum cutting is over, is perhaps the most joyous of the Mizo festivals. The season is ideal, the winter bows out yielding place to the spring which reinvigorates nature and brings a freshness to human life. The Mizos, irrespective of age and gender distinction, participate in the festival. Decked in colorful dresses, boys and girls go on a dancing spree which sometimes lasts all through the night. Paul Good, a post-harvesting festival, is celebrated during December to January. Again, a mood of thanksgiving is evident because the difficult task of tilling and harvesting is over. Community feasts are organized and dances are performed. Mothers with their children sit on memory platform and feed one another. This custom, which is also performed during Tsaptar Kut, is known as Chong Nut. Drinking of rice beer is also part of the festival. These two days of festivities are followed by a day of complete rest when no one goes out to work. The original garment of the Mizos is not as one. They were used by men and women more or less in the same fashion. One has to see them to believe the intricate traditional designs woven by the Mizo women. Born weavers who produce what can only be described as art on the looms. The Mizo have held onto certain patterns and mottos that have come down through the ages. This design has become deep-rooted in the tribal consciousness and has become a part of the Mizo heritage. The unique value of Mizo Puan comes from the personal involvement of the weaver, who, with great labor weaves her dreams into each work and weft until every design has a story to tell. These traditional hand-woven apparels are of different shades and designs without exquisite play of color combination and intricate weaving patterns has been evolved. Some of the common clothing or one are Mizo have a number of dances 
which are accompanied with few musical instruments like the gong and drum. Kualam. Kualam literally means dance of the guests. It is a dance usually performed in the ceremony called Kuang Zoi. In order to claim a distinguished place in the society and to have a place in Paradis or Pialral, one has to attain the coveted title of Tang Chua. There are two ways of attaining this title. Firstly, one could attain the title Tang Chua by proving one's mettle in war or in hunting by killing many animals, which should include animals like Birkin, deer, wild boar, bear, wild gael, viper, hook, etc. Secondly, one could also get the title of Tang Chua by performing feasts and dances. Tang Chua therefore could be attained only by the brave or by the rich. The ceremonies performed in the second method are known as Kuang Choi. Zero. Zero is a very old traditional dance of the Mizos. It is believed that the dance had already existed way back in the 1st century AD. While the Mizos were still somewhere in the Yunnan province of China before their migration into the Qin Hills in the 13th century AD and eventually to the present Mizoram. Some of the tribes living in Southeast Asia have similar dances in one form or the other with different names. Men sitting face to face on the ground tap long pairs of horizontal and cross bamboo staves, open and close in rhythmic beats. Girls in colorful Mizo costumes of Ponte, Korte, Vakiria, and Trina dance in and out between the beads of bamboo. This dance is now performed in almost all festive occasions. The unique style of the Tero is a great fascination everywhere it is performed. Gongs and drums are used to accompany the dance. Today, modern music also complements the dance. Sarlam Gai Solakya. This is an impressive dance originating from the Poi and Mara communities in the southern part of Mizoram. This dance is known as Sarlam Gai, whereas the Lusha is referred to it as Ralulam. In all the days when the different tribes were constantly at war with each other, a ceremony to deride the vanquished beheaded skull of the enemy was usually held by the victor. This ceremony is performed to ensure that the vanquished soul remains a slave to the victor even when the latter also dies. The derision ceremony usually lasts for five days. The first two days is spent in merrymaking, singing alongside drinks and a non-vegetarian feast. On the third day, a pig is slaughtered and the victor paints his whole body with animal's blood, which he only washes off on the evening of the fourth day or on the morning of the fifth day. During this five days period, the victor is not to sleep with any women. Tselam Tselam originated after the year 1900 on the lines of the songs known as Bumazai and the dance known as Tlanglam. It is a dance that embodies the spirit of joy and exhilaration. It is performed to the accompaniment of a song called Tsehla. People squat around in a circle on the floor, sing to the beat of a drum or bamboo tube, while a pair of dancers stand in the middle, recite the song and dance along with the music. It was a dance performed over a round of rice beer in the cool of the evening. The lyrics are impromptu and spontaneous on the spot compositions recounting their heroic deeds and escapades and they also praise the honored guests present in their midst. While singing the song accompanied by sound produced by beating of the drum or clapping of hands, an expert dancer performs his dance chanting verses with various movements of the body with limbs. Darbu, a set of three medium brass gongs having three different notes of sound is called Darbu. This set of gong is normally beaten or played by three experts. Sometimes an expert individually beats them simultaneously by tying the two gongs on each side of his body with rope and the other one in his hand. 
Each of this gong has different notes or tune like Do, Re and Mi of tonic solfa. There is no inhibition as to when these gongs are to be beaten. It is, however, beaten on any occasion mostly during festivals and celebration of some important events. It is rarely possessed by ordinary person. Only the chief and rich persons were in possessions of this set of gongs in the past. It is very difficult to ascertain as to when the Mizo used and had this gong. Kuang Kuang is a Mizo name for drum. A lock of wood is cut out to three feet long and hollowed out. Both sides of the hollow wood are covered with the skin of domestic animals like goat, cow, guile, etc. Dar Kuang Among the different types of gongs, Dar Kuang is the biggest type. The size of this type of gong may be different. Some are big while others are small, almost akin to the size of other type of gongs. The biggest gong of this type in Mizoram, which is measured 91 inches in its circumference and 31 inches in diameter, is kept as one of the museum objects in the Mizoram State Museum. Rotsheim It is a Scotch's bagpiper-like mouth organ or we can say a Mizo bagpiper. It is made of a dry hollow gourd into which are inserted nine bamboo tubes of different size and length, five of which being fixed at the gourd of about two inches distance from the other four tubes, both of which are tied together but slightly slanting outwards. To make different notes of sound, holes are made at the desired spot of the tubes. Blowing is done at the tapering end of the gourd. To produce sufficient sound, a hard blow is required to be made and different notes of sound are made by blocking or opening the holes in the tube with fingers. Peng Long The word Peng Long is a bamboo flute. A bamboo tube is cut open at both ends, one end being notched with splinter of bamboo and a small hole is made near this end for blowing. Near the other end of the tube, three holes are made for producing notes. When the performer blows, Notes are produced by placing his fingers at the holes. Since recently, four holes have been made to produce more notes. Tumpit The musical instrument is also made of three small bamboo tubes. The tubes are tied and plated in a row with canes or strings. Each end of the tube having notes are used as base. The upper ends are cut open at different length so that each and every tube has different notes. The player puts the open tube against his lower lip and then blows down. Natum Though simple it is, but very melodious. A leaf, preferably thin and tender one, is plucked one edge of the leaf is folded and inserted in between the upper and lower lips of the performer who then blows it. The harder he blows, the louder the sound. The performer can play tunes of any song with it. Limloi This is purely a Mizo musical instrument, a kind of which has not been possessed by any other people in the world. It is made of a piece of bamboo, the size and length of which being equivalent to an index finger. A string is tied at both ends of the bamboo piece. The performer plays with the help of his hand and teeth inside his mouth. Different notes are produced according to the opening of the performer's mouth, narrow or wide. Tuyundar This is also a simple music which was mostly played by children. A chunk of bamboo tube only between two notes is taken. From the outer covering of the bamboo, two or three pieces of cane like strings are carved out. The strings are then raised up by inserting two pieces of bamboo between the string and the bamboo tube near each note. It is played like a guitar. Tring trung. The Mizo word tring trung is guitar, but the Mizo guitar is played like a violin. It is made of a hollow gourd in which a bamboo shaft is fixed. The hollow guard is cut open and covered with a dry bladder of animal. The string taken from Malai Sago palm is tied at both ends of the bamboo shaft. It is then played by rubbing the string with a thin fine piece of bamboo 
exactly like a violin is played with a bow. Inbon. Inbon is the most popular Mizu game. The two strong men pulled together on their ways to lift each other. Formerly, the game was played with bare hands. Since some years back, the use of cloth has been introduced. Any kind of Mizoko's cloth is used and the same is tied round the waist of the player. In Sukhol in Suknor, as the name implies the players holding both ends of a wooden pestle with hands push each other, any available wooden pestle can be used for the purpose. In Shripo, this is exactly a tuck of wool. In the past, they used a thick woody creeper as they had no strong rope. In Sai Shripo, the material used in this game is a rope, the two ends of which are tied round the neck of the two players, each trying to move in the opposite directions. If one moves southwards, the other moves northwards. If a line drawn at the center is crossed by a mark made in the middle point of the rope, the player who moves farther forward is the winner. Inba Inba is a game played by both sexes of Mizo children. Sometimes adult male and female also play and no limit to the number of players is fixed. However, the players are divided into two groups or teams. There are various kinds of games and methods to play. The material used in this game is locally called Goy, the seed of a large creeper bean. As such, the game is also called in Goyba.